So we're going to do the DBS station first. Um, and I'll kind of show you, walk you through uh, what we do with the um, surgical planning station. Uh, this is the cadaver head that had the um, uh, fiducial box you can see here. This is the Lexcel frame with the uh, fiducial box in place with those fiducial markers. Uh, so that's a cadaver head with all that air. And uh, we have the, uh, the MRI right here that we're going to use. It's, uh, it's the, actually, the, the merge was not too bad. Uh, so we're going to format this image uh, from the native images to uh, images that are reconstructed parallel to the mid plane. So this is the anterior commenter. You can see connecting left and right. There's a fornix right there. And uh, we're going to select the posterior commenter. And once we have that, now we have the axis of the anterior commenter, posterior commenter. And along that axis, the, the skull, the, the head can basically rotate anywhere. So we need to define what's up and down. And that's the midline plane. And it's already pretty good right here. So I'll rotate this maybe just slightly. Uh, so now it's been formatted. Uh, and we can make a plane. So um, we'll do, we're going to work on the right sides because that's the side you guys are standing on. Uh, we'll do a GPI right side, uh, set target, use a probe's eye view. And here you can, kind of, you can really see how you're coming in. You know, are you entering a sulcus? Are you hitting the, a gyrus? There's a coronal suture right here. And this is just a default trajectory, 60 degrees from horizontal, 15 degrees from midline. And of course, this is not actually we're going to hit on the skull because this is somebody else's head that we've uh, merged with the cadaver head. So, uh, so I think there's no reason to kind of adjust that. We can adjust this just for fun here. Uh, adjust the entry point. Well, I think that the um, uh, the keyboard's not working. Let's see, because it's not connected. All right. Let's see how that works. Okay, so uh, yeah, so there's our entry point, our target, our entry. We can adjust the entry, you know, pick our where we want to go and pick how to get there safely. So we'll go to that spot right there, and that, that, that'll be fine. We can go a little bit medial, perhaps, uh, but we'll leave that since it's not the actual head. So there's our uh, target, our trajectory, and then if we go a little bit deeper, we should be right about the uh, optic track. So here's the optic track in the lower left hand corner right there. And in the coronal slice, you can see we're coming along optic track. So in a typical DBS, we'd have other sequences like the proton density, the T2, where you can directly visualize uh, the anatomy of the globus pallidus, for example. But once we have uh, our target and our uh, uh, trajectory set, uh, then we can get our uh, coordinates. Uh, so these are the Lexel stereotactic coordinates. X, Y, Z defines the target. And once you have the target, the entire frame is going to be centered on that target, and the ring and arc define the trajectory. So what we're going to do next is we have those coordinates. We're going to uh, set the frame accordingly. So we are at uh, Y of 119.5. So I'll go to 120. Yeah, I can do 119.5. Z of 102.6. and. Uh, Let's see, 102.6. This is where we kind of go into like kindergarten mode. You don't take anything for granted. I always have another set of eyes verify uh, the coordinates that we're setting. Because this is where human error comes into play and where the future may be with robotics, where we have trajectories automated. Uh, y is 119.5. And Z is 102.6. And there we go. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's really important to have uh, tech, check, double check, triple check uh, where we are. And then the X is set on the arc. And our X is 76.1. And I usually do this on a uh, Mayo stand. So you have the elbow room to kind of do it right. And then our uh, arc is 71.4. Yeah. So, and that's how we basically translate a plan that's been done on the um, MRI 
to stereotactic coordinates with a stereotactic frame. So this tool is all about having you know, 20 separate pieces fit together perfectly so that you can maximize the accuracy of the system. So it's engaged, lock it, secure it. And so what, what this frame is uh, doing right now is, uh, this is a, that's a little bit loose. Where's our brain lab guy? All right, hopefully that will stay. It is loose though, okay. So now as this goes up and down, it's, it's gonna be, uh, uh, it continues to fo uh, target uh, the target we selected on an MRI. So right between these, uh, these circles, uh, this is pointing right at it no matter what our arc or our ring is set at. So our ring is gonna be 51.3. So 52. Okay. And once we have this positioned, we can use it to identify our entry point because we've selected our entry point carefully to avoid critical structures. So we, we don't want to shortchange ourselves by changing that entry point. So mark that spot. And then we can plan our incision. So now we'll come back around, bring that forward. And usually I'd use a little cup or something to um, make a template. This is a little bit anti more interior than we would typically do. But make a half circle incision. This tissue obviously is not as clean as a live specimen. And then we can use the periosteal elevator to clear it up. Get our wheat linder, and we are going to be ready to reposition the arc to confirm our entry point for our burr hole. So ring is 51.3. Okay. So we did this once to plan our incision. We did it again to plan our burr hole. And then we'll do it a third time to actually insert our cannula. So this will be the drilling part. Protect my eyes and protect my face from the yummy bone dust. So all, uh, we have three companies making D uh, DBS uh, hardware for the United States, and all three of them use the same kind of standard burr hole uh, cover. So here's our perforator. And the goal here is to have it not migrate. Let's see, we got somebody from, you got the, you, you got the drill? All right, this is our Medtronic drill bit. How are you doing over there? Have you loaded, is it loaded on correctly? You guys wanna sort this out? Here you go. So um, yeah, the next step is we're gonna make the burr hole and then we'll put the uh, uh, stim lock, the um, lead fixation device on the skull right here. And here we go, okay. don't like the smell of bone dust, you shouldn't be a neurosurgeon. I love that smell. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so uh, do we have some irrigation? Okay, and then this is the, uh, uh, the skull fixation device that uh, mounts to the skull and will lock the lead in place. So every company has their own name. This one's called the Stimlock. And often I'll uh, counter, so I'll actually mark this out uh, with a pencil and then I'll countersink uh, this bump. So these are kind of like the DBS horns. And if you countersink the skull, uh, the horn will not be as prominent. So that's a little cosmetic step that is probably the least elegant part of the operation, having to countersink, but at the same time spares the patient having to go the rest of their life with this prominent bump. Okay. All right, so once we have that, let's see. Let's clear out some of that bone dust. Okay. So we bring our arc back into place. Right about 51 and a half or so. 51.3. Okay. And now we're ready to open up Dura. So I use this little sharp tip stylet that'll show me exactly where we need to open. That looks good. We're right on Dura. You can clear out that little shell of bone that's left behind after perforating. Sorry. And we can be a little bit aggressive here since it's dead tissue. And the key here is to make sure that as we place the cannula to target, that we don't have anything deflecting the trajectory. So we want to make sure we remove bone, have a nice opening within the dura, and also open up the pia, because sometimes the pia can be like cellophane and can really be deflected as we try to pass the, uh, the cannula. So it's good to get subpeel and uh, with, with electrocautery. So now that we're open, we're going to place our cannula to target. Okay. And I'll usually use a Penfield one for this step to advance that further. And when we do this with recordings or we do it awake, this cannula will stop uh, two centimeters above target. In this case, I have the cannula going all the way to target because we're not recording. And now we're ready to place the DBS lead. And this little stick is basically made to measure the DBS lead. Uh, so that when we position it on the star drive system, it will end up right at the target. Let's see. There we go. So advance it further. So now the DBS lead is in place. It should be right at target. I place it such that the second contact up is the one that's going to be at my target. So I'm, I've got a contact below and above. And then we use this little Pac-Man clip to secure the lead without shorting it. If we pinch too tight, it'll short circuit the lead. Lock that in place. Sorry. Mark it so that we know that's not moving. Then I proceed with removing the stylet from the lead. And then we'll place the cap and usually I'll have a little bayonet to help fold this down. That's all right, it'll probably go into place once I put this in. There you go. Okay, so now it's all locked in place. It's not going to move, and now we can get our confirmatory image uh, with the O arm. So we can bring the O arm into place. And so for like a unilateral, you can easily do this within 30 minutes. Bilateral, you know, 50 minutes to uh, an hour and a half, depending upon teaching. Uh, so now that it's in place, uh, we step back. Where do you want to stand for this? 
we'll get a quick spin. And you can see the O-arm has already been positioned for both scanning and we park it away while we're doing the operation. Okay. The long one. Okay, good. Okay. And it's going to send over as soon as it's loaded, right? Okay, so the, uh, the images are being sent over right now. You can see that. We have the name, right? SS. F, ORM, okay, good, okay. So let's see, it's coming over. So now we get to see how we did with our sharpshooting. Hopefully the, if, if we're not on, I'll blame the cadaver's uh, tissue. All right, didn't pop up automatically. Images, okay. Let's see. Uh, you know what where it is? What was the name? Okay. I don't see it here. Okay, you want to uh, combine them? Yep, we're just waiting to combine the different image sets. You can see that's the that's one right there. Yeah, so in the, um, we kind of have, at, at, at the residency program level, we kind of had a, a sequential, you know, increase of responsibility as uh, the residents kind of master frame placement, you know, got the opening and closing. And all of it is sort of, again, it's the 100 simple steps that all have to be done, you know, quote, unquote, perfectly um, so that uh, uh, we don't learn by mistakes, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, there it is right there. So it looks like it's, okay. Right here. Okay, there it is, good. Okay. So now we're gonna merge this. So there's our picture at the bottom here. This is the, um, you can see these are the Lexel arc supports on the side. It's merging, looks pretty good. Verify that merge and proceed. Okay, so here's our plan. That's our MRI and we're gonna turn on, this is our other one, yep. Okay, so the big reveal right here. There's our lead right there. You get a trajectory view. You can see there's a DBS lead, so it's a little bit deep there. And our error is 2.2 millimeters, which would be something we correct. 
uh, in real life and something that we usually see when doing cadavers, uh, but right there. So about two millimeter air tells us right there. You can see it's a little bit deeper because we're kind of hoping to target that contact right there. Uh, but we can see one, two, three, all four contacts. And then we'd probably use something like a proton density to check out the anatomical placement before a repositioning as necessary. Uh, but that's basically the combination of using the pre-op uh, MRI, uh, intraoperative imaging to register the patient, as well as for lead verification uh, for DBS surgery. So thanks.